Thousands of people in Yemen have lined the capital streets in protest against the Saudi-led blockade of their country. Last week, Riyadh introduced a full blockade on Yemen, closing all access by air and sea. The Saudi-led coalition entered the civil war in 2015, supporting the ousted government against Houthi rebels. Its blockades have left millions starving and has led to what's been called the deadliest outbreak of cholera in recent history. However, after pressure from the United Nations and human rights groups, the Saudis claimed on Monday that it would roll back the blockade to a partial one again. However, Human Rights Watch says that claim is a form of cruel fiction, explaining that the ports that Riyadh will reopen aren't enough to provide essential supplies of food and medicines. Saudi Arabia says it will continue with its partial blockade until it's convinced there's no flow of weapons from Iran going to the Houthi rebels. Uh, the civil war in Yemen is being seen in the Middle East by, as a proxy war between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Next, Artis Jacqueline Vuga looks at whether the current Cold War between the region's most powerful countries could lead to a full-scale conflict. The rivalry between Middle East powerhouses Saudi Arabia and Iran is nothing new, yet it's becoming ever more tense with fears growing of a full-blown war. A missile launched by Yemeni rebels directed at Riyadh earlier this month has already got the Saudis talking about direct aggression and war. The coalition's command considers this a blatant act of military aggression by the Iranian regime and could rise to be considered as an act of war against the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. You know the might and position of the Islamic Republic. People more powerful than you have been unable to do anything against the Iranian people. You are not strong enough to do that. Wherever we look in the region, conflicts can often be boiled down to Saudi Arabia and Iran countering each other by proxy. The Saudi military campaign against the Houthi rebels in Yemen, backed by Iran. Saudi backing of Sunni rebel groups in Syria, while Iran supports the Assad government. Both of those conflicts aren't exactly panning out well for Saudi Arabia. So how would they fare in a direct conflict with Iran? Let's break it down. Looking at a global military strength rating, the two countries aren't far apart on the list, with Iran at 21st and Saudi Arabia taking the 24th position. And while Riyadh's aviation outstrips Tehran's, Iran wins out when it comes to tanks and naval assets by a long run. It's probably no surprise that the Saudi Kingdom has a massive defense budget coming in at over 56 billion, dwarfing the Islamic Republic's 6 billion and change. But when it comes to manpower, Iran has significantly more citizens fit for service in the event of war. You have a very rash ruler in Saudi Arabia. I'm talking about the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. You know, he's just about ready to do any dangerous acts. If you look at what happened with the Lebanese Prime Minister, Saad al-Hariri was basically forced to resign. That gives you just an indicator of how far Mohammed bin Salman is willing to go. But um, I personally would be very, very surprised if Saudi Arabia launched a war on Iran. Uh, I would completely rule out Iran launching a war on Saudi Arabia. If Saudi Arabia had... Uh, guarantees or a chance of winning, I think it would go ahead with the war, but I think Saudi Arabia believes it doesn't have a chance of win winning a war against Iran. The rhetoric might be at a boiling point at the moment, but there's still no sign either side is ready for open conflict.